I'm Ann Klinkner. This is my solo show at the Grand in New Alm. I am a weaver, hand weaver. I started out weaving in um, craft shows, for craft shows, and I ended up getting creative and doing all sorts of crazy things that ended me up here. Um, I grew up between New Alm and Sleepy Eye, and uh, my parents were Martin and Chloe Klinkner, which are fairly well known in the neighborhood, I think. And I have uh, several siblings living here as well. Um, I'm just really happy to be here and we'll show you my art. We're going to go to a table that has some of the art that I started making at the craft shows. And um, we started out with simpler things and got to much more complex. So uh, these are typically things that I would sell at a craft show. But the new things I can't sell there. So. These are not in order of production, but these are earlier pieces because they are wall hangings. As I was working with people at the craft shows, they would sometimes ask me if I did commissions. And sometimes those commissions were for um, wall hangings, creative wall hangings. And initially I sort of said, do you want me to do what? And they said, go for it, Anne. And so I just started doing them and turned out I was having a lot of fun with it. So I started making them on my own. And I love color. I'm one of those people that has an extra fourth type of color cone in my eyes that you can test online. Um, so I see many more shades of color than most people do. Um, which I think most artists probably do, um, and it's why they love art, <laughs> because their world is different. So um, this is called windows. Um, they're very small little windows that are released where the uh, weaving is released from the warp, or the warp's released from the weaving, which makes, in my mind, sort of a window effect. Um, this is something that I did that's sort of a stepwise thing, but then it ended up looking more like a temple to me. So that's what the name is. Um, this one was a warp end. If you know anything about warping or weaving, you have a long warp on the loom, and when you get to the end and you finish making what you want to weave, you have warp there, and you tend to play around with it. And this was a warp end. The warp goes this way instead of up and down like these do. Anyway, um, this one's called Tribal, uh, mostly due to the colors. It feels very powerful to me because of that. Um, then I started doing the um, sculptures. This isn't the first one, but um, this is one of the first ones I did with telephone wire. The old-fashioned telephone wire used to have all different colors on the inside of an old gray cable. And so you would strip the gray cable off and separate all the wires and then get yourself all of the different colors in the order you want. And, um, and then I wove it with the brass wire. That makes your substrate. After that, you use that like clay to form into the object then. So, anybody can do it, really. <laughs> this is another one of the same type. Also has some of the, has the tribal colors going on in it. I sometimes talk about them like they're like um, the Celtic knots. The Celtic knots have a, have a uh, line in them. If you look at them, it goes, um, it is completely continuous through the pattern in the Celtic knot. And some of my pieces are like that as well, where you can pick 
a color, one wire, and follow it, twisting around through the entire sculpture. And uh, so they're kind of fun that way too. This piece right here is called Ice Nine. I did that um, four or five years ago. Oh, you wanted me to tell you when I started weaving. That was in 1994, I think, um, or six maybe. I started weaving. And um, so anyway, Ice Nine, if anybody out there remembers Kurt Vonnegut's Cat's Cradle, it, Ice Nine was a doomsday um, substance that looked like water, but um, froze at a very low temperature and melted at a uh, very high one. Anyway, if you put it in any body of water, the whole thing would turn solid and it wouldn't melt unless it got to 400 some degrees or something ridiculous like that. So basically, if you put it in the ocean, everybody dies. Okay, that was the, and this is an example in my mind of what water looked like when Ice Nine had just hit it. And there are small beads here that are supposed to be liquid, resemble the liquid water. Something like this would have been inspired by a small sculpey sculpture like this that I would have made many years beforehand. So I did quite a few of those, not very many survived. They were one of the earlier things that I did as far as three-dimensional. Um, this one I call Yellow Brick Road after Wizard of Oz. And um, it's a standard overshot um, type weaving. I use that quite often. Most of the patterns that look like they're where the heavy thread is sort of laying on top is a technique called overshot. It requires two different shuttles to do. Um, but it has a lot of versatility. So, um, moving on. Um, these are two things that I have that I just like because they re inspire me to do, to think outside the box. Um, the little picture is something I call a doodly, and the other piece is another sculpey um, object that I had from a long time ago. Um, then these three are a series where uh, the first one has two blocks of color that alternate in space. If you stand back and look at it long enough, they pop in and out. Where the red's on top first or closer to you in space, and then the yellow one is closer. Um, so the next step was to try and do three, three different blocks and see if you could get those to move. I didn't think that was as successful as the first one, but then I moved on to the third one, which as you can see has a different design and is more sophisticated, and in my opinion, obviously the best of the three. And the, this little piece on the windowsill was actually one of the first of the uh, wire and yarn sculptures that I made. Initially, as a scientist, I was uh, trained as a biologist. I worked for a drug company in research for almost 20 years. And we had enzymes all over the place. So that piece, originally when I started creating these, my idea was to have them look like the three-dimensional uh, pictures that you get in scientific magazines of enzymes. And the enzymes always have different portions that have characteristically different arrangements of the molecules repeated over and over. And then they also have little pockets um, in them, and they also have certain places in those pockets that have different charges, which allow the enzyme to grab two different things in the proper orientation so that they can come together, which is why how an enzyme works. So um, this one was fun. I did this off a loom. This was not done on a loom at all. This was done in a doorway. And um, 
Basically, it reminds me of Star Trek and the way that space warps and they travel all around in, in between the suns. The suns are the bells, and I like the idea of the bells this being the suns because it's true that suns actually ring in their own way. They're making all kinds of noises that you don't hear, but they have a characteristic frequency, and so you could say they ring. And um, moving on, this one piece right here is my most ambitious. Um, it came after the first three on the wall and was sort of a preparation for it. I call it Twisted Rainbow. And there's um, a little joke in it. There's a needle hanging off of it somewhere. Um, just as a point of creative interest. Yeah, it's back in the corner right now. So, um, this is another one of my telephone wire sculptures. It's sort of a alien looking bug to me. And then uh, the piece over here on the left, uh, I call tranquility because it just makes me calm when I look at it, and it seems to have that effect on a lot of other people too. Um, in fact, it was hanging in the physical therapist's office for quite a while when I lived out in Pennsylvania. She was loath to give it up, but it was on loan, so but she said that her patients liked having it there too. Um, the one next to it, the happy spiral, is pure play. Really, I was just having fun. So, and I like spirals. Spirals are fun to me. This piece is a classic um, piece of overshot again. I believe the pattern for this is something called Valley Forge Dogwood, which um, I happened to live right next to Valley Forge when I was in Pennsylvania. Um, this is a piece I gave to my mother who's passed on, but it belongs to my sister now. And then last piece, I believe, is this one over here, which was a wedding present to my sister. Can't tell you much about inspiration, I just wanted it to look like that. And it sort of is two people tied together. If you, if you want to look at this part is one person and this part is another person, they're woven together. So um, that's kind of it. And I hope you enjoyed the little look around my show. And come to the gallery and see it in person. It always looks better for real.